everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be working on a cosy sketchbook video. I've got my concertina sketchbook here and we are going to come up with some ideas. So as I said I'm using my concertina sketchbook which is by C. White of Brighton. It's 140 GSM so it's not the best quality of paper but I'm going to really push it through its paces in this video. But if you are interested in purchasing this sketchbook or any of the other art materials in this video, I will link them all in the description box below. So the very first idea is to limit yourself to using just one colour. And I'm using my Jackson's Art watercolours to paint this portrait and I'm only using a Payne's Grey watercolour because as you might know it's one of my absolute favourite colours to use so I thought I would try out using it for an entire painting and only limiting myself to that one colour. If you've seen my getting started in a sketchbook video you'll also know that I want to improve my portraiture so I thought this would be a really good way to experiment and also push myself into creating a portrait painting. The best way that I have found in using a single colour when using watercolours is to use layers. This will allow you to gradually build up the depth of your painting and also the intensity of the colours. I started off with quite a light wash of my Payne's Grey and as I'm going in with darker colours I'm just adding more of the pigment to my paint to make it a lot darker and a lot more intense because I want there to be quite a strong shadow around the hairline and also to show how that's casting across the face. You can try this idea out on any subject matter, it doesn't have to be a portrait if you don't want to paint a portrait, however it is a really good challenge to limit yourself to just one colour as it makes you really think about 3D form and also how you are using your paints. If you don't want to use paint you can even use this technique with colouring pencils, oil pastels, absolutely any art medium that you can think of you could use this limited colour palette with. So it's a really good one to practice in your sketchbook. I'm quite pleased with how this portrait has turned out and I did really enjoy using just one single watercolour paint and for me personally I think that for just a sketchbook study this has been quite a successful little painting. Let me know in the comments what you think. For this next idea I'm adding a wash of magenta for an underpainting before I go over the top with my gouache paints. And I'm using the Himmy gouache paints that are massively popular on YouTube. So if you're interested in those ones, I will link them in the description box. I like to use my sketchbook as a way to create ideas and work through different processes before I go on to a larger scale. So here I'm just thinking about the composition of this square piece. I've got a square canvas board that I really want to create a painting on but I've been working through a few different ideas in my sketchbook before I go through with the actual piece and I think using your sketchbook in this way shows your journey and also your thought process between some of your larger pieces. So it's a really good way for you to show those ideas in your sketchbook. This particular idea came from a visit to one of my local garden centres, it's one of my favourite ones in my area and they sell a lot of exotic and unusual plants and they've got a really nice cactus house and the last time that I visited I took some photographs in there and this is just from one of the photographs that I had taken and I just wanted to try painting it and I thought it could transfer really well to a larger painting. It's also a really good way to experiment with different styles in your sketchbook for a larger piece. I really want to include a lot more brightly coloured backgrounds in my paintings so that they show through when I paint over the negative space and they have almost like a little halo around some of the shapes. And this is kind of a little bit 
reminiscent or inspired by Wayne Tebow. I'm a really big fan of his work and I do really love his use of colour. So that's one of the reasons why I also experimented with that really bright pink in the background and again it will be a good way for me to see if I like it before going on to a larger painting. I'd quite like to develop a series of paintings based on botanics and I think working through my sketchbooks like this will help me to focus what it is I'm trying to create as I would like to create a series that I can then create prints from or sell the originals and I want them to be of a high quality so just working through the ideas is a really good way to get started. I finished this painting off with some details using my Faber-Castell polychromos just to define some of the plants a little bit further and overall I'm quite pleased with this. I may create it as a larger piece, I haven't quite decided yet. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think I ought to make this into a larger piece? I'm not too sure just yet. It will be in acrylics and a lot more refined if I do choose to create it. Now on to the last idea for this video and I don't think you can really get inspired for spring unless you create a nice landscape painting. So I thought I would go for just a meadow with some daisies growing in there and go for quite a nice loose landscape painting. I've blocked out all of the daisies using my Jackson's Art masking fluid so that I can maintain that crisp white paper and then I will remove that at the end and add in some dark shades around the daisies just to give them a little bit more definition but I thought it would be a really easy way to create those daisies just to lightly block them in using the masking fluid and I would highly recommend it. I'm layering up my colours as I go, allowing each layer to dry fully before creating further layers on top, just to make sure that the background looks like it's further away in the background and the foreground we can see is nice and bright and has some texture on there as well. I've kept the daisies quite large at the front as well to give the impression that they are really close to the viewer and I'm going to add a little butterfly on top of one of the daisies as well just because I thought that would look quite nice, quite cute and quite summery. I did find that it was quite tricky to pull off the masking fluid in this sketchbook. It did pull up a little bit of the paper but this sketchbook is not really designed for mixed media or watercolours but other than that it did actually work quite well. It was just peeling off the masking fluid that didn't really work all that well. And again I finished this piece off using colouring pencils to define some of the daisies and I also used a white pen just to add a little bit more of an impression of daisies in the background in the meadow and I finished off that butterfly using my pencils as well just to add in the details on each of the wings. I'm really quite pleased with this little painting and it does make me feel really inspired and ready for spring and summer. Those were my ideas for my sketchbook for spring. I'm really excited for this time of year. I absolutely love seeing my garden come back up to life again and it makes me feel so inspired. Let me know in the comments which idea you're going to try out yourself, which one was your favourite and also give this video a big thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it really does help my channel out. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.